Nightmare Zone was Old School RuneScape's first real update. Despite having a ton of hype before it launched, its issues post-launch made it one of the most hated updates of the last decade. But just about everyone had their own different reasons as to why they hated it. So Old School's team originally came up with the idea for the Nightmare Zone in April of 2013. Sort of. In a developer blog, they said, we have a ton of cool content from back in 2007 that we could re-release, but we don't have the tools to do so yet. But in the meantime, we could do basic things like recolor 3D models and create new items, monsters, and objects using those models. The team wanted suggestions on what they could make using this technique and listed two ideas that they had come up with to just help kickstart the reader's imagination. One of those ideas was to introduce a magic leprechaun and a door. If you pay him some money, he'd give you a key to that door. You give the key a password, use it on the door, and you're in your own Calphite Queen lair. Other players could join you only if they knew the key's password, but for some reason didn't need another key? I don't really get it, and most people didn't really seem to care about Lucky Charms. Their other idea made more sense and was much more exciting. An aged guardian's stands by a lever near the Yanel Bank. When you talk to her, she lists the boss monsters of quests that you have completed. You select which one you'd like to fight again, and once you're ready, you pull the lever. You are teleported into a cave that looks exactly like the KVD layer, but instead of the KVD, you meet the monster you wish to fight. It's a private cave, so you'd have the monster all to yourself. If you win, you get rewarded with yellow tokens, which the aged guardian can exchange for degradable yellow armor that absorbs monster damage, but not PvP damage. This idea did really well, so much so that players wanted that idea to be fleshed out more, rather than proposing their own, but they didn't know they'd later regret it. But I know you won't regret getting some delicious meals from today's sponsor, HelloFresh. They take the hassle out of mealtime with their pre-portioned ingredients and easy to follow recipes. And you don't even have to leave the house since it comes straight to your door. With 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week, you'll find stuff you like, like maybe these firehouse cheeseburgers. I'm normally horrible with spice, but this is the second time I've tried them, and they're actually becoming a favorite of mine. Since they're sent to me pre-portioned, there's also a big cut down on waste too, which is great for me wallet and the earth. No worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen either, I'm definitely not, and I've been able to consistently make good food with their directions. So if this sounds good to you, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGCOLOAPR50 for 50% off plus your first box ships free. Once you click, my description will even live update to count up the purchases. Now, players probably liked this idea because it was new, but familiar. In 2011, RuneScape 2 got the Dominion Tower, a mini game where you would climb a tower fighting bosses from quests you've completed and earn rewards. The update was pretty well loved by players and conveniently reused a lot of the game's old assets. So the team figured that it would do well in old school with some changes. In the next developer's blog, they expanded on their original idea. The ancient guardian who stood outside Yanil's bank was changed to be a traveling mystic outside of Yanil's gates. This mystic would read your memories and send you into a dream where you would fight old quest bosses once again in a copy of the KBD layer. You may be wondering why the KBD layer of all places? At the time, the team could add objects to existing areas, but not make new areas. Even when they later did get a fully fledged map editor, they didn't have any 3D artists for a bit, so every new map would have to be made out of already existing models. They just reused the KBD cave because it was big and existed. 
The post goes on to list every boss you could refight, and then the different modes the minigame would have. Endurance, where each boss is spawned one at a time, after you defeat one, the next one spawns, and Rumble, where every boss you have unlocked would spawn simultaneously over and over until you die. But it was a safe minigame, so you didn't have to worry about losing your stuff or getting smacked back to Lumbee, unless you played using a technique that I will mention later. As for the yellow tokens, they had been scrapped in favor of a point system, and the yellow armor had been scrapped as well because the team wanted to keep things old school. Instead, you'd be able to use your points to buy items like flax, essence, and herb lore secondaries. Exciting, I know. Now, these were things that were traditionally not worth the time spent gathering the normal way for high-level players. I'd argue that this was a bad choice because it would nuke the traditional methods, making it even harder for low-level players to gain wealth, but old school's inequality gap is not the point of this video. At the end of the developer blog, Jagex said, if you guys like this idea, let us know, and maybe it'll show up in a future poll. You know, Jagex didn't want to spend all of their very little manpower on something if nobody actually wanted it. It'd be a huge challenge too, because prior to this, the game's only updates were small tweaks. For example, long messages wrapping onto a second line instead of the end just disappearing into the void and players would already lose their minds over stuff like that. Well, most players liked the idea, but had a lot of feedback about it. So before throwing it to a poll, Jagex wanted to make sure it had the best chance of passing. So they incorporated that feedback into a new developer blog about it. So on June 5th, 2013, the team posted a blog all about this new mini game, which would be named the Dom Onion Tower. Luckily, it wasn't the team's final name for the minigame, we'll get to that in a second. But how did it even get this temporary name? Well, it's obviously a nod to the Dominion Tower, but it's deeper than that. The traveling mystic who managed the minigame would be named Dominic Onion, a totally real and normal name. And much like Jagex, Dominic wanted to profit off your nostalgia. He grew up on Lunar Isle and liked studying magic, but his dad wanted him to become a banker like every man on Lunar Isle. Dominic wanted to pursue magic instead of making his dad happy, so he left the Lunar Isle for the mainland. Dominic realized just about everyone there was an adventurer with misty memories of quests that they had completed long ago. So Dominic set up a business where he would send his clients into dreams where they could relive their nostalgic memories, and he set this all up right outside of Yanil city walls for tax purposes. I'm not kidding. The blog actually says that. Now, lore aside, we got a few more details about the mini game itself. There would be a fee for entering a dream, and both endurance and rumble mode would also get hard modes for higher level players. As for the rewards you could purchase with points, you remember how the team scrapped the yellow armor thing to keep things old school? Yeah, forget I ever said that, because the Dom Onion Tower would offer degradable tier 50 and 65 melee, ranged, and and magic armor. They would have a random chance to restore health during combat and would be charged up using reward points. The team also wanted to offer scrolls that would teleport you directly to a rune crafting altar and other scrolls to take you to any player owned house portal in the game. They also suggested potions that you could purchase to boost your combat stats, but they could only be used in the mini game. Finally, were things mentioned in the last developer blog, like essence, herb lore secondary, and other annoying to get but useful items like buckets of sand. Keep in mind, these were all just suggestions, and most would also have to pass a poll first. Now, despite the awesome name and tax evasion based location, Jagex would also poll where the minigame would go and what it should be named. The poll went live a day later, and it was interesting. The minigame itself passed, but none of its rewards did. It would still have rewards rewards, as the herb lore secondaries, stat boosting potions, and other random items weren't pulled. But there would be no special armor or scrolls. As for the location, it would remain in Yanil. For the name, Nightmare Zone won with about 25% of the vote. But I have to mention the other options too. We had Dom Onion's Cave, Dream Arena, Dominic's Den, and my favorite, Domain of Morpheus. 
Now you'd think that the team would pull more rewards, because all of the ones they wanted to offer failed, but for some reason they didn't. The team would just push ahead with the rewards that they didn't pull. Three months would pass, and on September 5th, Nightmare Zone was released into the live game. On release, from what I could find, it was pretty well received. It was a great way to train your combat stats, you could earn a few hundred thousand gold an hour, and it was pretty fun, especially if you played with friends. But as players started to become more familiar with the minigame, pretty huge problems started to pop up. Let's start with the smallest one. After a while, Nightmare Zone would start to get boring. It had no unique rewards, so the average player had no reason to come back after a while. To fix this, a few weeks after launch, they pulled 19 more reward ideas. Things like the ability to trim your quest cape by defeating certain challenges, more secondaries to make new potions like super prayer potions, and a cow mask, all of which didn't pass the polls. But mystery herb boxes, those teleport to any house portal scrolls from the first one, and most questions about imbuing did. Imbuing is the process of bringing, let's say, a berserker ring to the rewards chest and spending a lot of points to double the bonuses it gives. So great, Nightmare Zone has good rewards now. But let's get to the bigger issues. NMZ wasn't just a great place to train your combat stats, it was the best place to. XP rates were so much higher than players and Jagex expected, and it blew past every other training method at the time. However, you needed the right account in order to get the best experience rates. A lot of quest bosses are pretty underwhelming, they don't do much damage and can be defeated pretty quickly. So if you just wanted to shred through some monsters and gain some quick XP, those are the bosses you'd want to fight. Today, whenever you enter a Rumble Dream, you have the option to customize it beforehand. You're able to pick which bosses that you've unlocked that you want to fight. Back then, there was no customization. During a Rumble, you were fighting every boss from every quest you had completed, no matter what. Players who had completed every quest in the game were actually at a disadvantage compared to players who had maybe just completed quests with the five easiest bosses. But Nightmare Zone wasn't just a solo minigame. If you wanted to, you could do rumbles with friends. But what if your friend didn't have all the bosses unlocked that you do? Well, only the bosses that you both have unlocked would appear. This led to the creation of a server is called boosting. Players would create new accounts and complete five quests with the five easiest bosses. They did five specifically because you needed at least five bosses unlocked to start a rumble. They would then run over to Nightmare Zone and charge players anywhere from 10 to 50,000 GP just to team up with them, invite you to their rumble, and leave immediately after the player joined. So whoever paid the booster would only fight those five easy bosses over and over again. This also led to the creation of boosting bots, bot scripts that would do exactly what I just explained. Boosting got so big that there were even scam bots created to pretend to be boosters, but would actually just steal your money. Now our next problem was that Nightmare Zone could get you to 99 magic for free. Let me explain. There's some bosses like the Dagonoth Mother that need you to use certain spells to defeat them. For example, in some phases, the Dagonoth Mother is only weak to water spells, so the runes you would need to defeat her would spawn on the ground whenever you entered a dream. To stop players from abusing these runes, you could only pick up 300 of each one at a time, but if you just dropped your stack of 300 on the ground, you could pick up another stack of 300, drop that, pick up another 300, and just continue until you had as many as you want and just pick up the now huge stack you've made on the floor. Even worse, there was a glitch that would cause these runes to spawn even if you didn't have a boss that needed them. So you could hire a booster to get the easy bosses, pick up the free runes, and use ancient magic spells to quickly get to 99. My best gaming moment would have to be when I got ancient magics on RuneScape. 
Yes, Asian magic! If you wanted to burst skeletons on Apatol, which would net you around 150,000 magic XP per hour, you were also spending about 1 million GP per hour. In the Nightmare Zone, you could get the same XP and spend nothing. In fact, you'd even profit because you could spend your points on rewards. This was abused so heavily that runecrafting started to see a pretty major decrease in profitability as the demand for runes fell. The final and biggest issue I want to mention is AFKing. Just like today, if you played RuneScape for six hours without logging out, you'd be forced out of the game. However, back then, it didn't work if you were in combat. So if you were in Nightmare Zone being constantly attacked, you'd theoretically never log out. But you might be thinking, actually, after 20 minutes, your character just stops attacking if you haven't interacted with the game. So it's not like you can just leave your computer for an hour and not get logged out. Well, that didn't exist either. If you brought healing armor like Guthans to Nightmare Zone, you'd always be in combat. Your character should outheal any damage done to it, and as a result, you could literally set up your character in Nightmare Zone, go to sleep, wake up, and still be logged in, gaining XP. However, if you were unlucky, sometimes your Guthans wouldn't heal you enough or would break, and you'd die partway through. This was back when aggressive random events still existed too. So sometimes you'd wake up, log in in Lumbridge, and have no idea what happened. But players just started wearing the Ring of Life, so they'd be teleported away should one spawn before their character could log out. So to recap, it's the best combat XP in the game, a free way to 99 magic, punishing if you complete too many quests, and can max your combat stats for you while you sleep. To put it lightly, players were outraged. This was all pulled as a fun little minigame, not the best training method in the game. So all these issues floated around within the community for a few months before Jagex finally decided to address them. By the time the team was ready to propose a solution, Nightmare Zone had been in the game for over five months. A lot of these issues probably should have just been fixed by Jagex without a poll, but this was the first time the old school team faced a controversy this big. As you know, Old School RuneScape has the motto that everything in the game is decided on by the players through polls. In the early days of Old School, they really stuck with that phrase. Even simple things like being able to use the middle mouse button to move your camera were polled, and it actually even failed the first time. So rather than fix all of these issues with Nightmare Zone and then tell the players, It is what it is. It is what it is. They wanted the players to decide if the issues should even be fixed in the first place. At the end of Feature Poll 16, there were three questions about Nightmare Zone. First, should the free runes provided by the minigame not give any XP? If you brought in your own runes, then you could gain XP with those. Second, should an activity timer be introduced, which will log you out of the game, even if you are in combat, if you haven't interacted with the game in over five minutes? And third, should we nerf boosting by making it so players who have more bosses unlocked get more XP? So for example, if you were to use a booster after this update, you'd get about a third of the XP you normally do, because you'd be fighting way less bosses. Unsurprisingly, every question failed. Nobody wanted to give up the most broken training method in the game, especially those who hadn't maxed their combat stats with it yet. A day after the poll went live, I think Jagex already knew that nothing was going to pass, so they made a slight change. If you were logged in for six hours, no matter what you were doing, you'd be logged out. So that killed most overnight training, but people in school or at work could just team viewer into their PC, log out and log back in, set up a new dream, and continue racking up XP. After everything failed, I think the team felt kind of stuck. They knew that Nightmare Zone needed to be fixed, but the players had spoken. This is when they made a decision that made players a little suspicious. So you know that glitch I mentioned earlier, how even if you didn't need the free runes to defeat the bosses in your dreams, they would sometimes still spawn? Well, Jagex was somehow unaware of this glitch the whole time. So on March 4th, they patched it. You could no longer get free runes unless you 
were facing one of the three bosses that needed them to be defeated, and none of those bosses were AFKable. So Jagex fixed the free rune problem, and players had to go back to spending money at places like those skeletons on Apatol. But it felt weird. How was this bug undiscovered for so long? Especially when everyone on the team was so active within the community. And it's suspicious how it was patched a month after the poll's failure. Some players accuse Jagex of just inventing this glitch to get their way. But that's just a theory. A game theory. Either way, Nightmare Zone was now slightly less broken. But you could still AFK for 6 hours at a time, gaining insane melee and ranged XP. Over the next year, the hate for Nightmare Zone would only continue to grow. Jagex would send out informal polls asking players what to do, say they need more data before making a decision, and not really get anywhere with it. Mod Ash and Mod Matt K would communicate that they regret how the whole situation had been handled and wished they had stepped in to fix things earlier. But Jagex knew they couldn't pull the players again, because even with all the outrage, it likely wouldn't get that 7 75% yes vote to pass. So they put on their big boy pants, and exactly two years after the release of Nightmare Zone, they secretly made it so after 20 minutes of not interacting with the game, your character would stop attacking and would be logged out. So you could no longer do it for six hours unattended. Oh, and a few months later, Jagex would pull the ability for you to customize what bosses you got in your rumble, which killed off boosting entirely. Imbues are also some thing I want to quickly cover. A lot of people hated that Nightmare Zone was the only way to get these best in slot upgrades. Jagex had talked about moving them from Nightmare Zone and making them a part of the warding skill, but when warding failed, they were instead later added to Soul Wars and the PvP arena, but you can still get them from Nightmare Zone as well. Overall, Nightmare Zone was in a much better place after all those changes, but even today, it still has its issues. Let's start start with one that I've been holding my tongue on for this whole video. The design screams Moparscape. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. Compared to most content that came out after, it looks out of place because you can tell it was made out of existing assets. This actually bothered players so much that back in 2014, they did pull a graphical redesign once they had the tools to do so, but it failed with only a 71.2% yes vote. Now, I think it failed because the team was still really small, and players wanted them to focus their limited time on creating new content, and not just fixing something that works. Now that polls only need a 70% yes vote to pass, I'd love to see this repolled. Now, as for actual issues with its gameplay and not just nitpicking the design, it's been a decade since Nightmare Zone released, and it's still the best way to train melee in the game and nothing else comes close. It's so good that the demand for bot scripts for training combat skills have decreased a ton since Nightmare Zone released. Isn't that insane? I feel like it's so rare that the best training method for a skill stays the same for that long, and that method is so easy that some botters just go, I guess I'll play the game. But don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of people who bought it. Now, a lot of players are fine with Nightmare Zone being this powerful because, you know, we don't have the time we used to when we were kids. I even maxed my combat stats in Nightmare Zone because of that. Not to mention, it does allow people to get to the best content in the game faster. Does it kind of suck that previously more difficult and prestigious skill capes are just click once every 20 minute freebies? Yeah, but a decade later, I think it's just too late to fix, and as usual, just about everyone has their own opinions on if it even should be. Just like how nobody could decide if and how Jagex should introduce rare items like party hats to old school RuneScape. But we're lucky they did, because it kinda saved the game. Check out the video I did about that on the right hand side of the screen. 